Hello everyone, and welcome to this episode of The Coding Cube. Today we have a special guest with Praveen Joshua D, Product Manager here at Sync Fusion. Hi Carter. Hello everyone, this is Praveen Joshua, Product Manager here at Sync Fusion. I'm taking care of the design and development of Bolt BI product. Right, perfect. So, what's new with Bolt BI? Yeah. Uh, with Bolt BI version 2.8, uh, we have added quite a lot of features and improvements to the product. We could say scrollable dashboard, support for dynamic parameters and many more. And more importantly, we have been working on improving the capabilities of the widgets and providing more depth to the visualizations. A lot of improvements has been added to card widgets, maps, and conditional formatting has been added to almost all the widgets that we have in Bold BI. What would you say are the interesting improvements that have been added to the card widget? Yeah. A KPA card is one of the most used widgets in the world of dashboards. A KPA card can be used to show comparison of your key metrics, say, your web website visitors, comparison between last month and current month, or last year and current year. You can also use a KPA card to show a single value that is that has to be dominantly shown in your dashboard. In Bold BI, we have two different types of card widget, and we have introduced them recently in 2.8 version. Uh, the first one is the KPA card. KPA card is basically used to compare uh, two numeric values. You can just drag and drop two numerical fields to your KPA card and show a comparison based upon your own formula. You can also add icons, background images, and sparkling to show how the metrics progresses over a period of time. And importantly, you can customize all these elements using conditional formatting and show it in the dashboard. The second one is the number card. Number card is used to show a single numeric value that has to be dominantly shown in the dashboard like a sales or revenue details. Uh, number card also has the same structure of KPA card except that you configure it with a single numerical value. Again, a number card also has support for icons, images, and sparkline that you can use to show how your metrics progresses over the period of time. And I have a few examples for you to show how the KPA card is compared with number card. Uh, here we have the hotel revenue dashboard, and at the top we have a KPA card that shows the comparison of the revenue. Uh, between current year and last year. So we have used the KPA card to configure these matrices. Again, we have two different card widgets. One is to show marketing cost per booking, and the other one is to show earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So we have used the number card to show these details because it is just a single numerical value. We can go to the pharmaceutical sales dashboard example and here we have two different KPA cards to compare the sales and target. And as you can see, the Rx kind of drugs are doing well, and uh, the KPA shows how uh, the sales has improved over the target, and the non-Rx drugs is, has not done quite well when compared to the Rx drugs. And as you can see here, uh, the KPA value and the icons are conditionally formatted to show how the state of your key matrices in the dashboard. You can conditionally format these icon shapes, colors, and everything that you see here in the KPA card using conditions. So what other improvements would we have to look forward to that are coming to the card widget? Yeah, uh, we have been working on quite a lot of improvements to the card widgets. You can expect more card widgets to the library. One of the card widgets that we have planned is a multi-row card that would be helpful in showing multiple values within the same card widget. We have also planned to show dimensions within, within the card widget. So far in Bold BI, we have support only to show numerical values in the cards. But it would be quite good if you can show something like a country that is doing well in, in terms of sales and show only the name of the country that is a value of a dimension. And also you can show uh, dimensions like date and daytime value that has to be dominantly shown in the dashboard. So uh, you could expect these kind of features that would allow you to configure dimensions within the card and uh, more flexible layouts for you to configure your metrics in the form of a card layout. Of course, the card widget is one of the widgets that allows you to configure a metric in an elegant way and in a way that user can easily understand what's going on uh, with your dashboard and uh, key metrics. We have a blog in our website that can help you learn about the card widgets the blog has complete details about the structure of 
the KP card and number card and how to choose one for your requirement. It also has step by step procedure to explain how to configure card widgets from the scratch and integrate it with your dashboard. That's all sounding great with the card widget. Um, kind of moving on to a different one, uh, what are some of the improvements that have come to the map widget? Yeah, we have made some exciting changes to the map widget. So far, uh, what we had in the map widget is the ability to configure a bubble map or a choropleth map. Right now, we have added the ability to configure um, markers based upon latitude and longitudes. And uh, we have also added conditional formatting ability to maps so that you can configure everything and customize them based upon conditions. Now let me show you some examples of the map widget that, I, that we have. So at the left side, we have a Coropath map, which basically uh, shows the sales details based upon on, uh, US, US states. And uh, you can see that uh, the darker color shows the more number of sales, and the lighter one means that the sales has not been up to the mark. We have also added the ability to drill down the map so that you can visit the details or visualize the details county-wise. So in this uh, dashboard, I have configured to show the sales based on state and then drilling down to the county maps. So uh, this is one thing that we have added, that is the ability to drill down. And we also have uh, added the ability to map uh, markers based upon latitude and longitude. So in this part of the uh, dashboard, we have a map that uh, shows the sales details of various cities. And we also have marked the locations of those cities using the latitude and longitude value. As you can see, we have two different markers in this dashboard. So what I have done here is, uh, for the cities that have done sales more than a million, I have configured with a different shape, and those who are not made up to a million is marked with a shape, say, star. So likewise, you can also add conditions and uh, modify your markers in the map, and also you can modify the colors and everything that is related to what you want to show in the dashboard. So what are some of the improvements that we can look forward to seeing that are coming to the map control? Yeah, currently we are working on integrating Bing Maps to the Bold BA. So what we have right now in Bold BA is a shape-based map which renders on top of uh, GeoJSON. So right now we have only some limited set of GeoJSON and we have also been adding new shapes based upon uh, customer requests. But the Bing Maps should eliminate these limitations that we have and uh, the user will have all the features that we currently have in the map, like a support for adding a chloropath map, bubble map, or plotting based upon latitude and longitudes, conditional formatting, linking, all the interaction techniques will be included in the Bing Maps as well. In addition to that, the user will have access to the complete set of locations. They won't have any limitation based upon the region. So what are the different conditional formatting techniques that are available in Bold BI? Okay, so in Bold BA, we have three different conditional formatting techniques. First one is applying gradient colors. For a numerical value, you can configure a minimum and maximum value and apply color gradient based upon your configuration. Or you can also let Bold BA auto-pick the minimum and maximum value and apply gradients to the visualization. Second one is the rule-based conditional formatting. You can add n number of rules on the fields that you have and have a meaningful color shown in the dashboard uh, the third technique is categorical color. You can have different colors or individual colors for each and every value in a column and have the value show the same color in all the widgets throughout the dashboard. So I can show you a quick demo of uh, what we have done with respect to conditional formatting and it is applicable for almost all the widgets in Bold BI. So let's go back to the conditional formatting dashboard that we have here. You can see here I have configured a column chart with a country and revenue details. Now I can go to the conditional formatting technique. So in the formatting section, you can choose advanced setting and it will open up the conditional formatting window. So first one is the gradient. As, as I said before, you can mention a minimum and maximum value and choose your color for uh, each of them and have the gradient displayed in the dashboard or if you do not, if you don't enter the minimum or maximum value, Bold Bay itself will auto pick it and then configure the widget with the gradient. Second one is a rule-based conditional formatting technique. You can apply n number of conditions and format the colors that we see in the uh, chart series. 
uh, the condition may vary based upon your field type for example i have a total revenue here so the conditions what we have here are greater than less than all the conditions with respect to the a numeric field so likewise i can also apply conditions based upon a string field or a daytime field and uh, for a string field you can have conditions like contains with starts with and uh, so so forth and finally we have the individual or categorical color so you can see here i have five different countries in my chart and each has been given with a different color here so you can auto configure this or you can choose your own color and have the color displayed for that particular value the same throughout the dashboard so these are the conditional formatting techniques that we have been working on and uh, this is commonly available for all the widgets that has been uh, added to bold ba well, before we end our day today, do you have any tips or resources you'd like to share with the viewers? Yeah, of course. Uh, we have, you can go to the Bold BA website and we have quite a lot of examples available in the solutions menu. So you can, if you are from a different domain or looking for a dashboard, say from a pharmaceutical industry or if you want to build an energy consumption dashboard, we have examples for each and every domain and solutions in the solutions category. You can take a look at them and also you can edit them and play and configure it as per your requirement. Also, please visit our blog section. We always update the blogs with very uh, useful tips. And recently, we have been working on a guidelines for you to build dashboards with very huge amount of data. Always, we have seen users struggling with building dashboards when they have millions and millions of record in their database. Uh, there are quite a lot of blogs available in our blog section that can help you in building dashboards with a huge data. So always uh, keep a watch on the blogs that we add. Well, thank you again for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Carter. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And I'm excited to be here and uh, look forward to more and more features that we are going to add in Bold BA for building interactive dashboards and to take uh, bold decisions. Right. See you guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm.